Um, Ken, we got 40 minutes. <laughs> you know, okay. we, we ain't got money for all that. So we got 40 minutes. So hey, come on. Hey, Brian got money to look at my background. Man, <laughs> it's not Duke, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. That's very true. What's up, It's your man Braxton. And it's Lady Tia. And today we're going to be starting a new segment, which we like to call Spotlight. Where we're going to be highlighting the people that we think are impactful and effective to the culture. So we're actually going to have a special guest joining us pretty soon. Uh, he is a comedian that we saw during our Valentine's Day video. So if you hadn't had a chance, make sure that you check him out. I definitely uh, think this comedian is, is the next one up. I definitely think he is uh, a funny guy. And from what I've experienced in my interactions with him, he's a really good guy and a down to earth dude. So uh, we appreciate him joining us and he should be in shortly. Well, TV crew, we have our special guest in the building. This man is one of Florida's funniest comics. Personally, I just think he's one of our funniest comics, not yeah. just in Florida. Originally from Greensboro, North Carolina, winner of the Florida's funniest competition and also has a stamp from the king of comedy, Steve Harvey. He made his first TV debut on Nick Combs with Mom's Night Out, and he is a former Army, vet Army veteran. Thank you for your service, sir. How Thank you doing, Mr. Man. Ken Miller? How you doing? I'm good, guy? man. I'm good. How y'all doing? I'm straight. I j actually just got off work. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I got out of work, and my wife made me wash dishes. So, yeah, yeah. It was one of them days. <laughs> oh, man. They make you work hard, huh? I know, right? I'm like, I just got out of work, and I got to wash dishes? Like, come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> That's man. married life for you, bro. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get it yet, but I kind of get it. Me, me and T, we've been together for seven years, so yes. I, I get it enough. <laughs> okay, but y'all not married? No. no. <laughs> what, 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 what the problem is? We, we work I don't for, know. Man. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I'm just saying, Braxton, don't nobody want you. You might yeah. as well go and get married. <laughs> I mean, you ain't lying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might as well go and get married, bro. Don't nobody want you. How old are you? 24. Oh yeah, yeah. And man. I'm 23. And you're 20. Yeah. Y'all, so y'all been together since like high school. Yes, yes. high school. Well, smart. Okay, what high school y'all go to? Well, I went in Texas. Well, I went to three different high schools. So I went to one in Texas, one in Rome, Georgia, and then one out of the country. Uh, are you a military kid? No, dad was on oil and gas. Okay, all right. I just uh, I thought you were a military kid and he was bad as hell. <laughs> they, they had to just keep moving you school to school. Like, she a bully. We got to take her out of this school. <laughs> Braxton, what high school you went to? So I'm I'm from Columbus, Ohio, but I went to school in Katy, Texas for about six months. And that's okay. where we went. Uh, look at y'all. High yep. school. Yep. It's all meant to be, man. But then, well, hold up. Then, but I met y'all at Greensboro, right? Yeah. <laughs> what What y'all doing in Greensboro? <laughs> Don't nobody just go to Greensboro to go to Greensboro. Well, we went to A&T. So, Whoa! Yeah. Do I need to switch my shirt? I got Aggie shirts in the closet. Oh, man, I need to switch shirts. You do. Represent. Man. Ah, man. Hold on. Let me switch shirts. Hold yeah. On. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. I would have known that, bro. I would have switched shirts. Y'all know, y'all, so y'all recent to AT. Um, I graduated high school in 1995. I went to Grimsley, and I used to work at a restaurant across from AT called Parker Brothers Chicken and Fish. Okay. And um, it's a pizza place now. So that little pizza place that's across the street in that shopping center, mm -hmm. that used to be Parker oh, Brothers yeah. Chicken and Fish. It was black owned. Um, the guy that owns um, um, uh, uh, the red the barbershop down the street, the Red Roof Barbershop or Red Roof Tailors or whatever, they own that thing. So anybody that went to NT in the 90s, if you ask them about Parker Brothers Chicken and Fish, they know that that was like a staple in Greensboro at the time. That was like, you know, it was one of the few black owned businesses were restaurants in Greensboro. So Parker, if you ask anybody who went to tea back in the day, ask them about Parker Brothers Chicken and Fish. Okay. My first and only high school job was them, them brothers hired me, man, and they and they were good to me for throughout the rest of my life, bro. Okay, good. So how did you get into comedy then? Um, dude, I was always just a funny kid. You know what I mean? I'm number eight of eleven kids. And when you got that many brothers and sisters, you gotta make it somebody gotta be funny. Somebody gotta have some talent out of all them kids. <laughs> and um I was always super funny. I've always wanted to do stand-up comedy. When I was in the 10th grade, ninth or 10th grade, I didn't do my science project. So the science teacher, name was Miss Barnhart, made me do 10 minutes of stand-up comedy. 
and and, because I, and I did it and it was funny and I was like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna move to New York when I turn 18 and I'm out and then I turned 18 my mama said no you're not you're going to the army mm-hmm. and I was like cool <laughs> and then dude I didn't do comedy again until I was 30 like 20 28 29 years old when I actually really wow. started picking up comedy um I ain't good at math what's 16 minus 43 mm-hmm. it's 27 <laughs> You asking the wrong brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was 27. I think I was 27 when I started comedy. I'm, I'm this is my, I'm going into my 16th year. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. If you're not, when you're not doing comedy and everything like that, what do you usually do in your spare time? I mean, I'm 43, man. I don't, I'm boring now. I'm, I'm, a, I'm I've turned into, a, unless I'm going out to a comedy show or going to watch an open mic. I'm, I'd rather be at the house watching uh, Unsolved Mysteries. Like, I'd rather watch ID Channel. You know, I like murder. I like I, murder TV. Me and my sister were literally just watching that yesterday, the Unsolved Murders. Yeah, I like I like murder TV. My, my wife owns a, um, my wife and I own a t-shirt company and we do uh, custom tees and stuff like that. And we just did a line of like crime TV shirts and crime shirts and they've been selling pretty good because people are like really into that. You know, people are really into murder, bro. I mean, right now, <laughs> you see the TV on, that's the ID channel. Like oh, I okay. want to see this episode, I got to record it because I need to see who get murdered in this episode. I think the husband did it. The husband always did. It. If it's insurance money, yeah. Your spouse killed you. You know what I'm saying? It's so Tia, check and see what your insurance is, Tia. If your insurance is high, just know Braxton might off you, bro. Oh, don't do me like oh, that. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I watch a lot of this murder. If you got an insurance policy over 250, you watch your back, mama. Sleep with a knife under your pillow. <laughs> and how long does it take you uh, to get, like, a perfect joke? Oh man, I'm working on this. I got a brand new three minutes. I'm actually about to post on Facebook and Instagram tomorrow. Um, I know y'all remember the set I did. Remember in the beginning, I did a bunch of COVID jokes. Mm-hmm. I I started that. I started that three minute set. I wrote that in August, and I just perfected it last month. Oh, okay. Like it 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 really because, um, I I guess with me. I, I tweak a lot. I tweak a lot of jokes. You know, I, I try to tweak as much as I can. But usually, once I, if I write it a certain way, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm, I'm a stickler to keeping it that way. Mm-hmm. When I should be adding to it or, or refreshing it and stuff like that. And so this three minutes, I, I, I was actually fixing it and changing it, which I normally don't do. Usually, if I write a joke, I keep it that way and I'm stubborn and I'm not changing it. But this one I've been tweaking. So that said, that three minutes took me six months to to where now I want to post it online. Yeah. Most comedians is two years. If you see a comic do a special, if you see, like, take Kevin Hart, for instance. Kevin Hart do a special, and then once that special airs, two years later, he's working on the next special. Once it gets on TV, that's when you need to go write a new set and start over again. So if, if I'm just using Kevin as an example. Kevin will drop his special. It'll hit the hit the market, and then for the next two years, he's back on the road traveling, working on new material, and then two years later, bam, he drops the special. So using in comedy, it's about two years that you work into because you it, it's memory. You got to memorize. You got to make sure it's on point. You got to make sure you know you're doing that same set in every city, and then you might get a tag here, and then you got to add that tag and remember that tag. So it's usually about two years if you look for comedians with specials. You know they're usually about every two years. Okay. Got you, got you. So what other comedian, I mean, when you were first starting your comedy career, who were the comedians that inspired you to really want oh, to do this? When I first started, of course, you know, the OGs, uh, Richard Pryor. Uh, when I first met my father, my father gave me a Richard Pryor tape. It was, it's uh-huh. called, is it something I said? Mm-hmm. And I listened to, I, I mean, I know y'all don't know about tapes. Um, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I got a son almost y'all age, bro. And uh, and I used to walk around with this walk, this headphones and this this Walkman um, and listen to this guy. And I'm like, you know, 11, 12, listen to this guy cuss and say the N word. And <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I'm I could do I want to do this. And um, and then after him, it would be Damon Wayans. Damon Wayans is a big influence for me. Uh, Chris Tucker. Um, Chris Tucker's original Def Jam sets were like what made me want to do comedy. And and Martin Lawrence, 
I, Martin is my favorite TV show of all time. Like, I you know, I was in high school when that yeah. <laughs> bro, I was in high school when that show came out. So we would go go to school and be talking about Martin. Like, yo, did you watch Martin last night? So in my younger days, those were the guys that influenced me. As I started to get into comedy, I started studying um, Patrice O'Neill. I started studying Dave Chappelle, who I think is the greatest comedian of all time. Um, Chris Rock, who is my favorite comedian of all time. Mm -hmm. So I kind of start studying those guys and, and, and take a little bit out of them. And then on the local scene here in Orlando, we have some amazing, amazing comedians. So when I started, you know, a lot of comedians who aren't famous that I, you know, start watching how they work. And I, I took, it's like basketball. I mean, you, you look at Kobe and, and he was Jordan. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, you know, if you look, I mean, the fadeaway, the turnaround, you, you take bits and pieces out of your favorite player or your favorite comedian. And then you, you know, you build yourself into a comic. I mean, you go look at your local comics right now. That local comic nine times out of 10 is mirroring another comic. You're oh. going to see somebody do a Kevin Hart. Uh, and they're not doing it on purpose. It's just who they they look up to. When right. I first started, people kept saying, oh, man, you remind me so much of Dave Chappelle. Now, I'm not saying I was as funny as Dave, just my mannerism. I do. I used to dress like Chappelle, like mm -hmm. his first special with the big shirt, the jeans and boots. Like, I, that's how I dress. Like, I used to dress like Chappelle. And then when Chappelle switched over to Chucks, I started wearing Chucks on stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you mirror your idols until you find your voice. And then you kind of start coming into your own and doing your own thing. Okay. So does that mean one day you're going to show up on stage with those, the overalls or something like that with a K on your chest? <laughs> no, no, I ain't going to go that far. I'm, I might go old school. I might show up in some leather. You show up with, like, some red show up like I'm on yeah, like Eddie Murphy Raw with the red. I might show up in red leather, bro. No, I ain't going to. I, I look, I'm a jeans, t-shirt, um, Converse guy. So that's for, that's my, that's pretty much become my wardrobe now. Like I'm the t-shirt, some jeans, and I, I, I dress like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> just like, I just like, I'm from the West Coast, bro. So nowadays, a lot of people say cancel culture. What is your opinion on cancel culture and how has it impacted comedy? Um, you know what? It hasn't impacted comedy as much because I feel like Dave Chappelle has spoke up for the comedians. Um, Dave Chappelle is like, look, we're comics. We're going to say what we want to say. You can either laugh or you don't laugh. You can listen. You don't listen. You can. There's an off button on everybody's television. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you hit power and you ain't got to watch it. Yeah. There's a, hey, I, I, hey, you can put your thumbs down on it and it never shows up again. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, don't, you don't have to listen to it. But some things need to be canceled. It, it's some things from our childhood and then my parents' childhood that just doesn't float now. I mean, you look at the Dr. Seuss things, you know, a lot of those pictures in those books, that needed to be taken out. And, and, and people were in an uproar, but it was actual Dr. Seuss Foundation that was like, hey, this is wrong. We probably shouldn't have, oh, am I allowed to cuss and say, what am I allowed to do? Do what you yeah, do. yeah. <laughs> we probably shouldn't have nigga in a book with a bunch of black people at a, like a, a auction. Like maybe we should take that out. And if you're and if you and if you don't understand that's wrong, then something deep down inside of you, it, it's messed up. If you don't understand that our kids don't need to be seeing Chinese people depicted that way, mm -hmm. or Jewish people, or black people, something is wrong with you. If you didn't think Pepe Le Pew what <laughs> didn't sexually assault people <laughs> something is seriously wrong with you it's something wrong with you i'm like i'm actually working on the uh i do these things called rants where i pick something i rant i pick eight other looney tune characters that need to be canceled but in a joking way right. but uh, if you look back on it i mean things like you know speedy gonzalez it, it, it's so it's so many cartoons that back in the day were were funny to us we didn't see anything it was nothing wrong with it but now you go look back on it and be like, okay, yeah. Yeah, that was wrong. <laughs> that was wrong. Yeah. yeah. So I I have no problem with it. It it hasn't affected me standard wise, because y'all saw my set. I don't say anything controversial. I, I actually don't talk about stuff like that. You won't hear me touch on transgenders. You uh, you'll hear me talk about gay because my daughter's gay. So, you know, I, I wrote a joke about that. She helped me write the joke. And I let people know, look, my daughter helped me write this. Don't don't come after me. Mm -hmm. But I don't usually go, I, I'm usually safe. You know, I'm a family guy. So my comedy is all about, about family. But to me, at the end of the day, if 
if something offends you or or you think something is going to offend your child or, or message your child, you have the right to stand up to that. I, I it doesn't bother me at all. It, it does, cancel everything. I don't care. You can <laughs> cancel there. Just don't cancel unsolved mysteries and Martin. For everything else, you can cancel. But it doesn't. It really doesn't bother. The the most controversy I've ever got. I um I did a joke about giving my kids Benadryl, and um and it's a joke. A hundred percent joke. Never. I've never given my kids Benadryl to put them to sleep mm -hmm. at all, ever. But it's a, it's a joke because a lot of parents do. A yeah. lot of parents would slip their kids Benadryl. I got an email from a lady, and when I tell you, man, that thing was like a scroll. It was like that. It was like that long, bro. It was it, 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 it was ridiculous, bro. And she was upset at me because I did the joke about giving a kid Benadryl. Her child had died from a Benadryl overdose that the babysitter gave to her child. Okay. And she said, you shouldn't be telling people to get their kids Benadryl. And I replied, I'm sorry that that happened to your kid because you know y'all you know we're just meeting each other but my son almost died first day of high school he had a brain aneurysm so he my son actually died on his on the first day of school senior year you know what i'm saying so but he's good now he's well so i understand I, I understood her pain you know what i mean because i almost lost my child but i told her straight up i said ma'am i understand your pain i get it but i'm a comic if you're taking parenting advice from a comedian, you're a horrible parent. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you take anything I say on stage and put that towards your life, you are a horrible parent, ma'am. Mm -hmm. and, and and I continue to do the joke because I can't censor. If if I do a joke about getting to a car crash and your your mom died from a car crash, you mad at me. What, what, what am I gonna be able to talk about? That was my experience. Right. Yeah. So I can't talk about my experience because you had a bad experience. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's probably the only thing comedy wise that I've ever had an issue with, with people you know, upset about myself. Other than that, man, you know, people aren't, I, I, I do a joke about fighting a midget at Universal Studios. And, and it, it is a true story. I didn't fight him, but I wanted to fight the guy. But I got in trouble for that. I said the word midget and people got offended by it. So I changed it up. I picked somebody in the audience and I make them say the word midget. Because <laughs> the audience person can't get in trouble. Right. So I, you know, I, I learned how to adapt. But uh, maybe those two, but for me, I, I'm not that controversial. You guys, I was I was opening for Preacher Lawson. He's like the cleanest comic on the planet. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I can't cuss. I cuss up during my normal show, but I couldn't cuss during his show. But y'all saw my set is. It's nothing about me that that, I, that cancels me. But th to get back to your question, if if it's something out there that bothers you, and 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 it offends you, you have a right to speak up for it. You know, and people can be mad about it all they want, whatever. It if that offends you and you don't want to see it, you have a right to not see it. Right. Period. Right. No, I mean I get that. That's that's one hundred right there. So I totally get it. So you won the first ever Steve Harvey Spotlight Comedy Competition in twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. And you pretty much got a stamp of approval from one of the kings of comedy. Man. I mean, you got to tell me, what was that like? What's that experience like? How Yo, that you, you know what's crazy about, about life coming full circle? Mm -hmm. The first movie I ever took my son to see was six months old, was Kings of Comedy. Wow. <laughs> I, I, no lie, I used, to work in, I used to work in the White House. And um, I worked a night shift and I would get off and it's, I couldn't sleep. So it was like a 9.30 movie. So me and my ex-wife, my first wife, took Junior to the movies. We wanted to go to a movie. And we went to the movie and we saw Kings of Comedy. And he sat there, you know, eyes wide open. Looking. That's probably why he's a weirdo now. Um, eyes wide open. So I guess why I can't make, wait to meet Steve to tell him the story. But what happened with that was a, a bunch of people were getting into this competition. I had never heard of it. And a friend of mine had posted hey, just entered the Steve Harvey competition. Today's the last day. And it had you had to submit a clean video. And my video had some cuss words in it. So I had to get my boy to beat the cuss words out because I don't know how to edit video. I'm old, yeah, I don't know how to edit. That's why I don't TikTok. I don't know how to edit at all. So my boy, I submitted the video. I got an email the next day saying, your video's been submitted, you're good to go. A week later, uh, we start let, they start letting people vote. And Next thing you know, I got another email saying, hey, we picked your video and you're in the top like 100. And I was like, cool. So for a month, we were sending votes out. We were sending votes out. And uh, finally, the day it happened, I think it was November 7th of 2019, 
I'm um, flying to Albany, New York. I was doing a weekend in Albany, New York. And I get there and I just bought a brand new phone, bro. So none of my apps are working. I'm trying to get an Uber. Can't yeah. get none of my apps to work, man. So I had to actually go on the website, uber.com, and to, to get, finally get an Uber. Now, I'm saying I've been traveling and all that. I get to the hotel. It's six o'clock at night. The show is at seven. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say on air, I did not take a shower. I just got dressed. <laughs> I got all that airplane funk on me. But yeah. hey, man, y'all tell anybody, man, I, I, I'm taking your life insurance policy. But <laughs> I get dressed. I get to the club. I have to go to Best Buy to get something from my phone. Because, um, you know, I got the, the, the Note 10. So you it doesn't have an auxiliary port. I needed the dongle because I sell merchandise. I get a call from a comedian, one of my friends named Akeem Woods. And this is exactly how the conversation went. He says, nigga, you won. <laughs> And I was like, won yeah. what? He said, you won Steve Harvey. I said, how you know? He says, bro, it's been on the internet for like four hours. Because you got to understand, I've been traveling all day. I haven't, I ain't got no alert. They ain't text me. They ain't call me. <laughs> Nothing. I found out from another comedian. And so I finally go to my social media. It's like hundreds of people like, oh my God, kid, congratulations. I'm like, I didn't even know. Yeah. First person I call, my wife. I call my wife and says, baby, I won. She said, won what? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I won the Steve Harvey thing. We're both crying. I understand you, bro. I'm in Best Buy. I'm in the middle of Best Buy on my knees crying, thanking God. I run back to the comedy club. They're, they're, try they're announcing me to come on stage. Yeah. I get there, the manager's pissed. She's like, where you been? Like, we're looking for you. I said, I, I won the Steve Harvey thing. She's like, what? I show her the video, she starts crying. Oh, wow. I run up on stage, I do my set, it's 25 minutes, bro. I don't remember anything I said. I, Cause my mom was just on, I won. Yeah. Like I won, a, I mean, this is a worldwide competition. This ain't local, this is worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I won. And I got done with that set. I said, look, man, dude, I still have my jacket on, like my big coat. You know what I'm saying? You, I'm New York, I'm, I'm from the South. Right. I got the big coat on. I got like four coats on, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't had a chance to get them to my T-shirt. <laughs> and I told him, I said, I just won the Steve Harvey stand-up spotlight. I get to go to LA, sign with an agent and meet Steve Harvey. And the crowd gave me a standing ovation. That's amazing. amazing. A standing ovation. I got off stage. The next person I called was my mama. And you know what my mama said? Baby, you can buy me a house now. Look, <laughs> look y'all, I want a thousand dollars. I don't know what house my mama think I'm buying with this grand. <laughs> but but, but then after that, I was supposed to go to LA, but then COVID happened. So that put it on hold. And then Steve Harvey moved to Atlanta. So now I'm waiting to go to Atlanta to meet, to meet Steve Harvey. And so for Steve Harvey to pick me, out of every comedian that it submitted worldwide, bro, that's amazing. Man, I do. I I get I get choked up just talking about it. You know what I mean? And it was a lot of love. It was some hate too. If you go read the comments, you know, a few people are like, oh, he's not funny. But this is what I always do when somebody posts under my video, I'm not funny. This I always say. I was like, hey man, I'm sorry I didn't make you laugh today, but hopefully I'll make you laugh in the future. God bless you. When I tell you, bro, they be like, oh, no, no, I mean, you funny. You just weren't funny in this. Because they want you to come back. But, oh, I ain't funny, son. I'll come to your house and everybody getting shot up. That's what they want you to do. They do. They want you to come back and they want to argue and fight with you. They just, they're trolling. Mm -hmm. So I hit them with the, hey, man, I, hey, I'm sorry I couldn't make you laugh. But you know what? The next time I see you, I hope I make you laugh till you pee your pants, man. God bless you. And they're like, oh, hey, I'm so I'm so sorry. Hey, I'm like, nah, you 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 meant what you said. It's all good. You, mm -hmm. I, you, you ain't gotta like me. Everybody ain't gonna like you, bro. And it's and us and it's all good. But yeah, man, that was that was crazy. That was crazy. And they didn't do it this year. I don't know if they're even gonna ever do it again. But it was it was dope, man. Because I've had some competitions where I felt like I should have won. Matter of fact, two weeks before Steve Harvey, I was in a comedy competition in Daytona. And I know I, I knew I won it. Like I like I I'd already stepped forward. Right. You know what I mean? Like I was already right there sitting next to the to the judge. We're like, yo, you gonna have my money? It was a thousand dollars. So you gonna hand me my money? The guy na that one name was Kevin, and you know my name's Ken. And yeah. and she was like, and the winner is Kevin. I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Even everybody in the audience was like, what? 
what? And one of the judges was emailed me and was like, hey, man, look, you should have won that. I'm sorry. But yeah. then two weeks later, I won yeah. Steve Harvey, which is way more important. And I still won my $1,000. You know what I'm saying? So, That's cool. you know, it, it, was, it was dope, man. It was a dope feeling. Yeah. God works in mysterious ways. And, bro, I, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something to you. This is how I know God works in mysterious ways. I moved to Orlando. First of all, am I talking too much? Because I be talking. No, man. <laughs> all right. Very good. I be talking. <laughs> I moved to Orlando in 2004. You know, the only thing I knew about Orlando, they had a basketball team. The Orlando Magic. I, I'm a Lakers fan, but as a kid, we love Shaq. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got Shaq CD. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all knew Shaq was a rapper, but I got Shaq CD. Don't make me go in the car and play, play it right now for you, Tia. So I'm, I, I, I married my, my first wife, and she lives in the Altamont Springs, Florida, which is outside of Orlando. And I understand this. Never knew anything about it. I didn't know Disney World was even here. That's, I didn't know this was Disney World. I knew nothing about Orlando. So took a chance. I moved here. Moved into an apartment. Guess what was five blocks from my house? A comedy club. Oh, wow. You can't tell me God don't work in mysterious yes. way. Wow. Like, I was supposed to go to New York. I wanted to go to New York. But instead, he says, ah, go live your life a little bit. I set you up. And bam. Dude, I lived in an apartment that was literally five blocks from a comedy club. And, and I started my comedy career at that at that comedy club. Wow. wow. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, that's just... Hey, ain't that crazy? That's mm. God's plan right there. Bro, yeah. For real. Can't be mad at him. Mm. Which comedian do you wish to work with one day? Oh, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. On everything that I... Bro, on everything... <laughs> man, let me tell you something. Dave Chappelle is the greatest... Dave Chappelle the great... This is how great Dave Chappelle is. Dave Chappelle can put a video on Instagram that ain't even meant to be funny. Mm -hmm. And we still are being like you watch all his recent videos. He's not doing much comedy. He's telling y'all, hey, don't go watch the show on Netflix. Like yeah. he's <laughs> talking about, you know, it, it's social injustice. He's talking about stuff like that. So, but it's still you still want to laugh. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he he still is polarizing enough that he can just be talking, and and you're like, yo, I'm paying attention to this. No comedian can do that. Yeah. There's no comedian out right now that can put out a video that, that Chappelle put out and you and people and it have a hundred million views. Mm -hmm. No comedian can do that. He's a smart writer. Um, if you look at his growth from from his early days of Def Jam to now, I mean, he's he's the greatest. That, that, that's nobody. And I know a lot of people get upset with me if they're going to say Richard Pryor. I love Richard Pryor to death. He's one of my favorite comedians. But Richard Pryor has some writers. And, and that's well known in the comedy world that Paul Mooney helped write a lot for Richard Pryor. And Sweet. I think some, I think that, I think the Wayans, I think Kena Ivory might have helped too. Mm -hmm. And but Dave Chappelle it writes everything. Yeah, everything is Chappelle. You go look at the the closing cr credits. It says written by David Chappelle. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's no that's no beef with that. I mean, I got jokes that comedians have helped me write. Also, every all comedians get tags from people. Yeah. Or hey man, you should probably you could use this. Say this. Or hey man, I got a joke for you that'd be great for you, but I can't do it because I don't have kids. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. That that don't have as far as I know, unless Chappelle doing a Drake and it's <laughs> greater high his Ghost Rider. Um, <laughs> Drake got Ghost Riders. I'm sorry, but I know. <laughs> if he did a great job at hiding his Ghost Riders, then Chappelle's doing a great job at it. He he's yeah. just phenomenal. But Chappelle would be number one. I would love to work with Chris Rock, mm -hmm. and I would love to work with Chris Rock. And then you know, three weeks ago, I already got to work with one of my other idols. I got to open for Damon Wayans. So I, I got that. I got that. So that's already off my bucket list. But if I can get Chris Rock and Chappelle, I'm, I'm it. That's it for me. That's it. I might go and retire, bro. Hey, that, I mean, that's a good list right there, though. So, yeah, man. So, I mean, you know, we ended this new year. Things seem to be calming down a little bit. So just kind of a two-part question. But one, what's your, what are your plans for 2021? And then two, what's next for Ken Miller? You know, what? What are your next goals? What's the next thing you're going to be doing? Uh, my plan is to stay on the road. I actually been back on the road since August. Um, I'm doing something different this year. I'm a, I'm a club comic. If you know, once you guys see a lot more of my Instagram, you'll see that I'm I'm I go I do clubs. Um, I usually don't do little one nighters or small rooms, but I decided in, in 2021 I need to. 
because ain't no clubs open. Right. So I got back to my roots when I was a young comic and I used to do these bar shows and, and these restaurant shows. And when I tell you, I've been having the time of my life. Mm-hmm. I, and, I, and I forgot how much I miss performing. Comedy is intimate to me. You know what I'm saying? It, I, I, I love Kevin Hart being able to do stadiums and, 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 and football arenas. I don't want that. Yeah. I like small, intimate crowds because comedy is intimate to me. So I got back into that. So I've been back on the road. Um, it, what's coming up is, man, I'm hoping this year to to record a 30 minute special and, and shop it. Um, that's my plan. And and the main reason I really want to do it is I need to get rid of this material that I've been doing for five or six years. You know what I'm saying? Like it's time for me to to get some fresh material. Like I'm, I'm still talking about my kids being teenagers. My son, 21. You know what I mean? I the joke I do about me and my wife being 10 years apart. I'm 43. I've been telling I've been saying I'm 39 for five years now. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> so it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff. So I, I think it, I motivate myself more if I get the special out, shop it to whoever wants to buy it and take it. And then you once you do that as a comic, you have to then write new material. You can't do the special. The stuff that's on the special, you have to get them fresh new material. So that's that's my plan, man. Try to write a new hour this year, next year, and uh, and and hopefully shop this special, and then stay on the road. Uh, I've been on the road every other week. I've I've either been at a club or I've been at somebody one night or off night, or I've been doing some corporate gigs. So mm-hmm. Florida open. Florida don't care. We, matter of fact, I don't even think Florida got no COVID. <laughs> yeah, Florida, Florida don't know about. It. Florida don't even know about COVID. And mm-hmm. Atlanta too. That's the yeah, same. Yeah, oh, hey, bro, All Star Weekend. Woo, mm-hmm. bro, All Star Weekend. Don't they don't care All Star Weekend. They, they they lucky they bring it to Orlando because we partied on our last All Star Weekend. We partied <laughs> way too hard. Man, well, good, well, good stuff. Um, that's all that we got for you. So, so did you want to share your information so that people that watch this video they can be able to find you, get in touch with yeah, you? Yeah, media? yeah, man, yeah, bro. Um, uh, uh, find me on Instagram, Ken Miller Thirty. Um, uh, please follow me. I'm trying to reach the 10k so I can get the blue check like Gorilla Glue Girl. Um, <laughs> I want the blue check like they done, they done gave how they how they what they done gave her the blue check. She and oh, man, look here, bro. I'm sick. about to glue. I'm about to glue everything together tonight. <laughs> I'm getting the blue check. You can find me on Facebook. Like Seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand, man. That, yeah. That's how. That, that's why reality yeah. shows are so big because we like the ignorance. Mm-hmm. We like a train wreck. For real, we are like yeah. a train wreck. Like people won't watch a sitcom anymore, but they'll watch a bunch of people in the, at a restaurant throwing water and beating each other up on one of these housewives shows because pe- people. People love them shows. Married in 30 days. Married at first sight. I just mm-hmm. married a convict. They, they got a show of people marrying people from jail and then taking care of these people when they love come out. And it's the highest rated. It. Yeah, love out the look. I tell you know what it is. I'm telling you, Braxton. <laughs> Braxton, watch you. She's going to kill you, bro. Hey. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, man. And, and Ken Miller Comedy on Facebook. Go like the fan page. Please do not send me a Facebook friend request, people. Except for y'all, too. Y'all, too. We family now. But okay. anybody else... I got 5,000 friends. I'm trying to get rid of some of them. Just, just go like the fan page. Just like the fan page, man. And and keep an eye out on Braxton. Because if his life insurance is high, Tia taking him out. And I'm, I'm going to be right there to testify. Uh-uh. <laughs> All right, Ken. Well, we appreciate you joining us, man. Just want to let you know, you're the first of our Spotlight series. So, you know, we think that you're someone that's impacting the culture. And we just want to Give a salute to you and say thank, thank y'all, man. And, and 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 good luck to y'all, man. I, I hope this thing blows up for you, man. Y'all, I like what you're doing. I like young black folk, boy. Young y'all, got, bro, y'all so innovative. Y'all, I be, I man, I watch, I be watching TikToks. I'm like, man, these kids know what they do. I can't do none of that. I can't edit. I, I had to send my video to somebody. Say, man, I'll give you fifty bucks. You edit this video. I ain't got time to be piecing this stuff together. I got ADD. I can't. I ain't got time for it, bro. So, hey, man, y'all, I, I wish y'all much success, man. I do. And Braxton, I need you to do me one favor. Yes, man. Man, go on, marry this girl, boy. Stop playing. All right, I, all right. Stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing, bro. And I want my invite too. I got. I buy good. I, I buy good gifts, bro. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you I love that. y'all, man. I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all having me on, family. Thank y'all Thank so much. Thank you so much again. Right.